I'm going to ask you guys to open up your Bibles with me to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 14, verse 22 through 24. Um, I don't know if you guys I don't know if you guys know today, but today is June eleventh, so it's seven eleven. I don't know everybody likes Fourth of July, but I like seven eleven because you go to seven eleven and you get free, free slurpees. So <laughs> when I was growing up in high school, uh, they had a day that they had uh, bring your own cup or whatever you can bring to get slurpees. So my friend bought those five gallon jugs at. And then he just filled it up with with, uh, with slippers. I'm like, what, what, what do you want with that for? I was like, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to bring the, the biggest thing I could find in my house. So, but I don't think they're doing it this year because of the pandemic. But they are giving free coupons. So if you guys want to, not that I'm into it, you know, because like, it's pretty hot. But anyways, so number 14, verse 22 through 24 says, because all these men who have been, who have seen my glory and the signs of which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me to the test now these ten times, I have, and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. So I want to preach to you guys today on the on the title, having a different spirit. So, uh, if you guys can bow your hands and, and, and pray, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord, this morning to give you praise, to give you all the honor, and Lord, Lord, <clears throat> we thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives, Lord, for all the good things that you have done, Lord, for protecting us, for being with us all the time, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all of my brothers and sisters that are here. I ask, Lord, that you preach your word today to all of us, Lord, that you open up our hearts and minds, Lord, that you use your servant to speak with boldness, Lord, with power in this morning, Lord. I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you move in this place, Lord, that you touch our hearts and our minds, that this message that you have for us, Lord, that we put it into practice. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can take your seats. <clears throat> So, you know, I'm going to name this uh, preaching a, a, a different message. I mean, a different, a different spirit. So, uh, I'm going to name you guys ten, uh, ten names. If, you know, I want you guys to see if you guys can recognize their names of them. And maybe if you don't, it's because I'm pronouncing it wrong. But, so I want to name ten names. Shemua, Shabbat, Igal, Pati, Gadiel, Amiel, Setur, Nabi. Gil and Gaddy. If you guys don't recognize that name or those names, it's it's understandable that nobody recognizes the name. But these names, these people, these ten men are the men that went, that, that were that were the spies that went to scope out the land for uh, Israel to walk and take their land, right? So this is the ten names, but nobody remembers this this names. And if you say those names by themselves, you don't know who they are. But then when you throw in the name Caleb and Joshua. And you will remember that those are the 12 spies that were sent to scope out the land. And the Bible tells us in the, you know, that each of these men was a leader. They were a leader in the tribe. That's where they, they, were, they were picked. You know, they were known as men of outstanding skills, having power and authority. You know, they would stand above all of everybody else. And they were, they were the ones you know, that were easy to choose for this kind of mission. You know, they would pick the best men of, of every tribe. Their leaders, the strongest man, their most skillful man. So it was easy for them to pick this man. And as a human perspective, you know, they they, they thought that this, this was the man. Now they were looking into this man and said, "This is the ones that are gonna scope the land. They're they're ready to 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 go for this mission." But God was looking for man with a different spirit. See, this man were depending when they came back. They didn't depend on God, they depended on their own skills and their own strength and their own army. And when they saw the land, they said, Giants said, oh, we can't do this. We can't take this land. Our, we don't even have an army. We just got out of Egypt. None of us, a lot of people didn't even know how to fight. You know, if you guys remember, Egypt was, or when they were in Egypt, they were slaves. So 
I don't even know if they have any swords or anything to fight with. And they saw the giants and the land and how the great other land was and said, we can't, we can't do this. But two men stood above all of them and said, it's not about our strength, it's not about our army, it's not about those giants, it's about the Spirit of God. See, they stood and said, it doesn't matter how giants or how many people is there, we have God on our side. See, this man were, the, the ten other spies were relying on their, on their army, they were relying on their, on their strength. And but God, God's looking for men, God's looking for young people that don't depend on their strength, that depend on God and men that have a different spirit. He's not looking for men that depend on, on, on their skills. He wants men with a different spirit. Man that says, it doesn't matter what the world tells me. It matters what God tells me. So if the world tells you, or someone tells you, you can't go preach the word right there because they're not going to listen to you. There's so many obstacles. God is looking for men with a different spirit that says, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go preach the word of God because God's in my side and He's the one that changes our hearts. So this is where we're at with this with the story. After Israel was brought out from Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea, you know, they saw the power of God and they saw the cloud of fire during the night and the cloud during the day and they see the, the miracles of God and then they would see manna from God as food. But now they were at this, uh, this place and they were ready to cross and go into the land that God has promised them. And, and then most of the sense of spies and their report was saying it was, it was a good land. You know, they said it's a good land, there's milk and honey. But then their report became negative. They started saying, we can't take this land. We're like grasshoppers to the giants. And we're sure that we're going to die here. So this ten spies turned the whole nation against God. But Caleb and Joshua kept saying, we can take this land. You know, they stood up to the other ten spies and said, you guys are wrong. Stop saying all those negative things and put your focus on God. And those two men stood up to them. But then, it wasn't just ten men after that. Because the other ten men turned the whole nation against God. And it was two men about, against about three million other people. And they still, they still stood their ground and said, no, God's on our side and we're not going to go on your side. We still believe that God can take this place, and we still believe God is going to do these things for us. See, the other people got mad because Caleb and Joshua was not agreeing with them. They said, These people are different. These people are not on their side. We should kill them. And the Bible says that they were ready to stone them to death when the glory of God appeared. So, it doesn't matter who stands against us. When we're in trouble, when, when we're in those difficult times, the glory of God is going to appear at the perfect time. Yeah. When they were about to stone them, God appeared to them and said, and told them, why are you guys, how many times do I have to teach you guys, or how many times do I have to show my power to you guys? And then God, and then God tells Moses, you know what, I'm done with these people. I'm going to destroy them, and I'm going to make a new, new nation out of you. But Moses tells, tells God, just think of what's going to happen if you do this. Just think of everything that's going to happen when you do this. See, Moses could have said, wow, God picked me to be the nation. It's not going to be known as the nation of Israel anymore, the nation of Abraham. It's going to be known as the nation of Moses. But we know that Moses had a humble heart, and he didn't want no glory for himself, he wanted the glory for God. So he told God, just think of this. If you kill everybody, or you get rid of this nation, what is the whole world going to say about you? What's Egypt going to say about you? He's going to say, they're going to say that you took them out of Egypt, but you failed them in the desert. You couldn't take them to the promised land. And in other words, you're saying, they're going to know that you failed us, or that you failed your people. They're going to know that God has a failure, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, my God is not known as a failure. My God is not known as, as losing battles. So God said, I'm going to forgive them, but 
They're not going to get to the promised land. They said, because people said, we're going to die in this place. Go, if we go to battle, if we go take the land, we'd rather go back to Egypt or we'd rather die in this wilderness. That's, that's what they said. They don't want to cross to, to the land. They said, we'd rather die in this place. Be careful what you say. And I'm telling you guys, be careful what you say to God. Because you're going into trouble, be careful what you say. If you say, I'd rather stay like this. If I'm not going to see healing, I'd rather stay sick like this. Because this is what they said. We'd rather go and die here. We'd rather stay in this place. Or we'd rather go back to Egypt. And then God said, is that what you want? Then that's what happened. You guys are all going to die in this place. Everybody that's 20 years old, 20 and up, is going to die in the wilderness. And none of you guys is going to see the land. Only Joshua and Caleb. Because that's what they wanted to do. So, be careful what you say. Because when we, when we go through trouble, sometimes we feel like, if, if we feel sorry for ourselves, we feel like God's going to, feel sorry for ourselves, for, for us too. But that's not how you ask things to God. When you come to God, you ask things with faith. And say, Lord, help me in this place. Help me in this situation. So be careful what, what, what you say. Be careful what you, you know, like, like they say up there, be careful what you wish for. Wow. See, but Caleb and Joshua, they both had a different spirit. They did not follow the other ten spies and they did not follow the, the, everybody in the nation that was saying they wanted to stay there because they had a different spirit. And what is being, being different is, or what is, what, what is it that a different spirit does to you? Well, being, being different brings blessing to you. See, because God called us with a purpose. He called us to be different than everybody else. He called Abraham to be different from his family, from everybody else, and Isaac and Jacob. And I love the story of, of how God picked Abraham. Because out of many people, he picked him. And I think of that, the same thing that I think of me, that God picked me out over all these 7 billion people that live in the world. I'm one of the chosen ones. It's all because of his amazing uh, grace and mercy. So he called Abraham, he called the people of Israel to be different. He told them, you guys got to be different than everybody else. You guys got to be different than your neighbors. You got to be different than the surrounding nations. Because you're a special people. You guys got to be different. I have called you to be different and I have called you to bless you. And you don't do what other nations do. You follow my word. And you don't follow the world. So if you want to, he says, if you want to keep this blessing, you keep your eyes on me and not on the world. See, a lot of times we, keep, we lose our blessing because we stop being different. And we become just like everybody else. We follow what the world is doing. And we follow what social media tells us. And we don't follow the word of God. So, God tells them, you guys got to be different. Being different is where, is where the blessing is. They had two reports. The spies came with two reports. The ten of them said a negative report. The two of them said a positive report. So if it was up to them, who, who were they going to believe? So you have two reports. Who, who are you going to choose? They decided to go with a negative report. Same for us, we have two reports in, in our lives. We have the report of God and the report of the world. So who are we going to choose? Because God is calling us to be different. God is calling us to be separate and follow His word. And the world, social media is telling us to go along with it. That everything is normal, that everything is fine. What report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe a report that says that you're going you're gonna to die? Or are you going to believe the report of God says you're going to live?
No, having a different spirit is following God. So what does having a different spirit mean? It means the, uh, it, this is what it means. When Goliath was standing up against the whole Israel, was mocking Israel, provoking God, a young man stood up and said, I'm not going to let this happen. A man, a young man with a different spirit stood up and said, Who is this man that's provoking the living God? He stood up and said, I'm not going to fight him with sword or shield. I'm going to fight him with the spirit of God. That's what having a different spirit means. To stand up no matter what. To stand up even though the whole nation does not go with you. A young man stood up when nobody else was standing up. And he defended the name of God. What do we do when someone says God doesn't exist? God is alive. Do we stand up and defend the name of God? Because I tell you what, when, when, when somebody is arguing about athletes and sports and your favorite team, the first thing you do is you, you stand up for your team. And you start defending it because you're a fan, right? Are we fans of God? You stand up and you start defending it. And I've seen people even go crazy about it and even fight over a team or an athlete that doesn't even even know they exist. We're fighting over it for someone that doesn't even know that we exist. You know, they're over there, you know, living their lives with millions of dollars, and I'm not not hating or anything like that, but I'm saying they're perfectly fine. We're over here, we're we're killing ourselves, or we're fighting over something that's meaningless. But what do we do when someone stands and says, God doesn't exist? And when someone tells us, oh, you, you believe in God because your parents make you go to church. I have, I have people ask me that question. I tell them, I don't believe in God because my parents made me. I believe in God because I've seen His glory. I have seen the miracles that He's done in my life. I've seen His, His mighty hand moving my life. That's why I believe in God. Not because someone tells me. I believe in God because I've seen His miracles. Yes. No. Having a different spirit is Daniel saying to the, to the people, to the king, to the servant, I'm not going to eat that food. Wow. Yeah. Because I have a different spirit. I'm not going to eat the same thing. I'm not going to defile like you guys because I have a different spirit. That's what a different spirit is. That when your friend tells me, let's, let's go to a party, you say, no, I'm not going to go because I have a different spirit. Yeah. Well, they tell you, just, just have a smoke with me. Wow. No, because I have a different spirit. Yeah. Well, why, how about a drink? You know, and, and for some reason, they all know this Bible. They all know this verse that says that you can drink a little bit. I don't know how, but they know that. Yeah. Well, you can't. You can drink a little bit. The Bible says it. And I was like, no, they, they never read the Bible. But how do they know that verse? But you tell them, no, I, I'm not going to drink that. I'm not going to do that because I have a different spirit. Yes. Not having a different spirit is the three young men, the Hebrew men that stood up while everybody else was bowing down. It didn't matter if the whole nation was against them, they stood up. Wow. You know, I can, I can you know, maybe imagine the picture. Yeah. You know, they're standing up and people next to them you know, bowing down and worshiping the, the statue and telling them, oh, you guys are in trouble now. You, know, you guys are going to get it now. But they didn't. They didn't. They did about that. They stood up. Why? Because they had a different spirit. I mean, a different spirit is preaching the name of God, no matter what. Because look at the life of Peter. When God was arrested, everybody left him. Peter denied him three times and said, I, I don't know that man. I've never been with him. You guys are confusing me. And even when Jesus was resurrected, they came, you know, they came and told him, Oh, Jesus has been resurrected. They didn't believe him. And then Peter ran to the grave to see if it was true. And even when Jesus ascended to heaven, they stood up there looking. And even angels came in the heart and said, why are you guys looking up? The same man, the same Jesus, the same God is going to come back the way he's leaving. So they stood, they stayed, 120 of them praying in the upper room. And while they were praying, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they started speaking in tongues and everybody else was hearing them. And everybody was saying, what is this man doing? 
What is this noise? Are these guys crazy? Are these guys drunk? So Peter stood up and said, we're not crazy and we're not drunk. We just have a different spirit. That's what it is. Having a different spirit. Well, people were calling him crazy. People were calling him drunk. said, no, I'm not crazy and I'm not drunk. I just have a different spirit. That's why I speak the name of God. Having a different spirit is when the word is speaking negative, you speak positive. When this word speaks sickness, you speak healing. Yeah, yes. When the word speaks dead, we speak lying. When I was, a, a, when my son, my wife was in the hospital, when she was born, um, you guys know that she, she had a C-section, and then, you know, I guess it's mandatory, you have to stay five days. And our son, you know, he was in the intense in the, in the care unit, I think it's called the NICU for new babies. Newborn babies and sense giving it. So he was there, my wife was in a separate room. We didn't we we didn't we wouldn't stay with our son because they had him over there. The nurses were taking care of him for five days. He wasn't with it. So a uh, Tuesday, I remember it was on the Tuesday and Wednesday it was gonna be the fifth day. The doctor comes up to us and says, My wife, you're good to go tomorrow morning. And we asked him about our son. He said, We just gotta do some tests on him and see if he can if he's he's if he's better, then he, he can go with you guys. But there was a nurse that kept saying he wasn't going to leave with us, that he was going to stay there. So when the morning comes, the doctor tells my wife he could go home, and he, and we, and he asked about son. He said, yeah, he passed all the tests. You guys can take him home too. So I go back to my son in the, the other room, and there's a nurse there. And she says, why are you guys going home today? And I said, yeah. What about your wife? And she said, I told her, yeah, my wife is going with us too. She said, wow, really? Your, your wife will go home and your son's going home at the same day. I told him, yeah. So that's, that's very uncommon to see. That's not something common to see that the son and the mom goes at the same time. Usually the mom stays or the son stays. And I, you know, without even thinking, without even knowing that, I told her, well, we're not common people. I tell you guys what, we're not common people. Yeah. Yeah. We are different. Uh, yes. Yes. Because when the world speaks negative, uh -huh. when the world speaks dead, we speak light. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because we have a different spirit. Uh -huh. yeah. So she looks at me like, like, oh, we're done. Like, this guy's crazy. But then she remembered that. I would be praying, I was praying for him all the time, so she said, oh, you guys are Christian, right? That's all you have. So, we're not common people, guys. Yeah, yeah. Just remember that. We're the children of God. Yes. With a different spirit, with the spirit of God. Because the Bible says that the spirit of him that raised up from the dead lives in you. Yeah. It's the same spirit. So, Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what it is that's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be transformed to this world, because this world is not our home. I remember I told that to my friend, we were talking about God, and I told that this world is not our home. And he looks at me and you know, he's, you know, like, he's like, so you guys are homeless, right? And I told him, yeah, you can say that we're homeless. Because this is not our home. As, as a Christian, you know, your sense of homelessness and homesick is normal. When you start thinking about God, when you start thinking of the New Jerusalem, it's because you're homesick. Because this is not your home. The truth is that we are stranger in this place. Yeah. Why well, would I build something in this place when I'm not going to stay here? I build, I, I build where it's going to last and where, I want, where I'm going to live the rest of my life. That's where my home is.